2015, a European regulation claimed to guarantee net neutrality and the right for users to choose their own routers. But is the battle for net neutrality over yet? No, it is not. In this next talk, Lucas Lazotta, who works for the FSFE, will explain how these new national implementations of the regulation will put these rights at risk. I am looking forward to its overview over recent successes for router freedom in, it, in the EU and what challenges are coming in the future. Lucas, we're really happy to have you. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, hello, Victor, and hello, everybody. I'm very pleased to be here today, and I would like to thank the organizers uh, very much for the opportunity uh, to talk about a very interesting topic, not just a legal board topic, but certainly something that uh, concern all of us. So thanks, Victor, for the nice introduction. Uh, today, my talk will be about net neutrality in Europe and the continuation of the struggle continuation of the debates uh, that uh, we are having right now. My name is Lucas Lasota. I'm Deputy Legal Coordinator of the Free Software Foundation Europe, and also I'm fellow research, um, researcher at the Humboldt University, where I'm working also in the field of IT law. Uh, feel free to reach out. Uh, there is my link uh, about me. And so let's get started. Today, uh, I want to talk about router freedom, an activity that we conduct uh, in, the, uh, in the Free Software Foundation Europe for already uh, several years. This topic has gained uh, more traction and become very important in the last years. And we'll talk about what is router freedom, what is open net and internet and device neutrality, and of course, why router freedom today is in danger uh, in, in Europe and what you can do to help. So how you can join uh, our advocate, so how you can join us in our activity. So everybody in Europe, every citizen has his or her rights guaranteed to use their own equipment to connect to the internet. First, I would like to uh, say that, well, uh, internet, oh, I'm sorry, uh, in internet access is a human right. So we do everything today in the internet and this year has shown uh, that not only our normal interactions, but our, not our personal interactions, but also our uh, work interactions, everything that we do are connected to the internet. So we must uh, guarantee uh, or empower users to have access to the internet through their own means, through their own equipment. So uh, guaranteeing their, their right to use their own equipment in order to connect to the internet is a must. And uh, since 2015, uh, this right is guaranteed by European regulation. So um, through uh, the uh, net neutrality regulation, although uh, the official name is called Open Internet Regulation, uh, uh, guarantees end users, consumers, citizens uh, for the four freedoms of net neutrality, the freedom of content, freedom of application they want to use, freedom of services, and freedom of devices. Well, we use different devices to connect to the internet. Uh, when we are at home, we use home, home routers. Uh, when we are in the street, we use our own smartphone, for an example. And uh, although uh, it's quite intuitive that nobody today tells that uh, the ISP owns your own telephone and you can use your own telephone, your own smartphone to connect to the, to, to the internet, it's not like that when uh, it comes to the router, uh, the home router that you use. So, uh, in, in fact, uh, we have seen that uh, users are, although it is guaranteed by law, uh, users have a lot of problems to uh, use their own router to connect to the Internet. And, of course, if you have your own router, if you have the, the, the free choice of your own equipment, um, not only is compliant with the law, but there is a lot of benefits. And here I would just like to say some of them. If we, if we protect router freedom, 
So the type of equipment that we use to connect to the internet, of course, then we are, are protecting freedom of choice. We are protecting privacy and data protection of the users. Competition in compatibility in the equipment market. And of course, security because users can update their own software uh, to make their equipment uh, more secure. Uh, yes, but uh, therefore the, the, the legislation protects that but as we're going to see, it's not so uh, straightforward uh, to comprehend. But uh, net neutrality uh, and this four freedoms is just the beginning of uh, a broader debate um, that is going on right now in Europe. Net neutrality guarantees that every user can access any online content or, or service using the device of their choice. Uh, the focus of net neutrality debate is concerned with the various network management practice that internet service providers, the network operators, should be allowed to pursue being the central gatekeepers between consumers and content providers. There is a difference between, however, between open internet and net neutrality. The European net neutrality regulation from 2015, we're going to talk about that in a minute, Enshrines, uh, and enshrines user rights to access and distribute information and content online. But it applies only to the internet service providers, which are all, only one link in the internet access chain. The ability to access the internet and to provide content relies uh, on a much larger chain in which other stakeholders also play an important role. Well, uh, open internet is a broader concept. Uh, it involves regulation against discriminatory practices involving software and hardware which could impact end, end users' freedom of choice. For an example, uh, operating system neutrality, uh, devices manufacturers which select an operating system and a small number of popular apps that cannot be uninstalled. The same is true for app stores in the, the mobile uh, market. Search neutrality. Uh, search engines like Google or Bing may uh, have no neutral conduct by ranking search results that relate to its own or affiliated uh, services high in the organic unpaid search results. And of course, browser, web browser neutrality, um, can, because web browsers can also be a vehicle that allows vertically integrated companies in favor of their own services at the expense of consumers' freedom of choice. Well. Uh, so uh, we see that uh, the, the debate of net neutrality uh, is much broader when we consider this other kind of neutrality in this, uh, in this other elements in the chain. And in this, uh, in this picture, we can see that the router uh, stands in the end of, of the, the, the network between the end user's domain and the public uh, net, uh, uh, network. Uh, ISP domain. And that's exactly the point where router freedom uh, stays in, in danger. And why router freedom, a concept, a very clear concept uh, in, in law is being danger right now? Well, we're going to see that um, there are vague rules on the European level. Uh, national authorities uh, responsible for monitoring the activities of the internet service providers, they are doing the bad monitoring. And the network uh, operators, they are imposing barriers on users. So let's see uh, the first one. So as said, the net neutrality regulation from 2015, they uh, uh, provides users the, the, the right of to choice, the, to choose and to use the routers and equipment they want to connect to the internet. Um, but in 2020, uh, there is a, a new set of rules, technical rules, regarding the network termination point, a definition uh, that determines if the router and the modem should pertain, should pertain to the user or to internet service providers. And Barrick has uh, put some uh, criteria to determine if the router should, uh, who should have the property over the router, the, the user or the ISP. And the most controversial topic in that uh, is that they say if there is a technological necessity, if the ISP can determine a technological necessity, the router can, uh, can go directly to the infrastructure of the ISP. 
And right now, uh, the uh, EU member states, they will implement these rules. The net, re uh, the net neutral regulation does, uh, does need to, to be implemented because of regulation, but the guidelines on, on NTP will have to be implemented uh, on EU member states. And here lies the problems because it will be easier for ISP to prove technological necessity and they can keep uh, our routers in their own infrastructure. So uh, besides that, this national regulatory aid authorities who, okay, so uh, right now the national regulatory uh, authorities, they are responsible for monitoring the activity of ISP. They are doing very bad and they are not imposing uh, any type of um, uh, fines or uh, penalties on those who do not comply with the regulation allowing users to use their own uh, routers. And of course, uh, uh, ISP, they are imposing different kind of barriers uh, in, uh, for consumers to use their own routers. And we at the FSFE, we divided the, these barriers in two types, the software barriers and the hard bar barriers. Of course, the hard ones are much serious because, for an example, cost, uh, co uh, customers are forbidden to use another router by contract. ISP do not provide users the login data to the public network. They use non-standard plugs or proprietary protocols. And of course, they don't, they don't offer technical support uh, for internet access. But there are other types of barriers, software barriers. For example, when they don't inform uh, the users that they have uh, the right to use their own routers, or they manipulate users through customer support in favor of their own routers. And of course, there are other types of barriers that ISP are very creative in order to uh, impose their own equipment on users. So, uh, what you can do to help, um, as we said, uh, there, there is very clear rules defending our rights, but right now we are suffering, a lot of people are suffering with uh, their uh, network operators, the internet service providers, because they, don't, they cannot use um, their routers. And we, are, we want to change this scenario. We want to um, uh, uh, demonstrate that in fact uh, our rights should be uh, 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 respected and we can do that because there are very clear rules. So what you can do to help? Three, three steps. Uh, contact your ISP, ask if you can use your router, and send me uh, an email. Tell me the results. Lucas.lasota at fsfe.org and um, let me know uh, what are the kind of problems you are having and we are working there to raise awareness in Europe around router freedom and fighting for our rights. So I, I think uh, we are done. My presentation is, uh, um, is quite short and I would just, I would be very happy to hear if there is some questions. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks and what people can do. I really like the strong call for action, ask your ISP. Uh, so far, there have been no questions from the internet, okay. but um, I thought that maybe, so, so um, when, when I was thinking about what you just told us, I was really interested if you could tell us, so imagine a legal situation where the route of freedom in the EU is absolutely guaranteed. What beautiful, nice, things would happen for the user. So what, what is the vision we're working towards here? What are the, the, the really good things that would happen for users if we, if we won this fight? Yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, again, just uh, I wanted to show the, the benefits for that because uh, first, freedom of choice. Uh, users will be completely free to choose the equipment they want. Uh, Today, um, an ISP, for an ISP, it's very easy to impose their own router. And if we are obliged to use their router, 
uh, we have problems with security because we don't know uh, which kind of software, if it's proprietary software running in their equipment. Um, we don't know if this software uh, has some bugs and therefore we don't know which kind of software is running on the equipment. So our privacy and data protection is all compromised. And of course, when we have the possibility to choose our own equipment, it's, it's, uh, we can, uh, uh, it's very nice for the market because we can then uh, provide free competition and compatibility. So we are fighting to, uh, this uh, kind of fight for router freedom so users can enjoy this kind of benefits. Okay, thank you. There just a question came in. Um, so it's, um, the, the question is asking about the possible examples of these technological measures. I think the rest is missing. Do you already understand what the question means? So I think there's technical measures the ISPs are implementing or the requirements. Um, right. And I think the question is asking for examples for that. Do you have any, maybe? Uh, uh, oh yes, uh, uh, for an example, uh, well, a, a very, very true example because it happened to, to me and to other staffers in the FSFE, the ISP, they don't want to provide use the login data to the public network. So we tell them, look, I have my router here and I need the login data to access your network. So we, I can have access to the internet here at my home. And they say, I'm sorry, uh, the, the login data is provided only inside the, our own equipment. So we cannot provide you that. You must use our own equipment. So this is one of, on, one of types of barriers, one type of um, technical measures that ISP impose on users. And, uh, uh, and we talk like here, but it, it's happening all, all uh, over Europe. Okay, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for the talk. Thanks a lot for answering, answering the questions. As always, we have the after talk discussion board where you can you guys can discuss something with Lucas and ask him additional questions. It's at all as always on discussion.rc3.ou.social. Um, and there's nothing more to say for me. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks Lucas for being here today. And uh, the program will continue shortly. Thanks a lot and thank you again, the, the organizers, for this beautiful and very nice opportunity to be together. Thanks a lot. It's a pleasure.